Hello, my name is Solar Teddy Bear or Adair, and welcome to my channel. Finally, all that you've been waiting for is finally here, right? Mm hmm. It was a journey making the script and trying to neatly form the lore for Lindell. Because when it comes to lore with my characters, I don't really write them down. <laughs> I don't really write them down that much unless you count info dumping about them to my friends as writing them down. Nonetheless, it was pretty fun. And relieving to do honestly i like writing this stuff down and as i'm writing it down i edit whatever i want to be canon or not canon and i'll talk about like more things like more future plans with videos and all that at the end of this video so if you're interested then watch the end of this video helps me out in the algorithm and makes me happy <laughs> feel seen you know <laughs> enough with me blabbering and getting off topic uh, let's get into the lore First of all, Lindell River May started off as a normal human boy, but he was the result of an unwanted pregnancy and was left in a forest in the front of a little cabin. His biological mother heard stories told from her parents and her peers that fae or fairies or mythical creatures and all that live in the very forest, taking children who get lost in it. You don't ever see those children again, and it's rumored they become one of their own. Well, the rumors were true. Partially. What took him in wasn't exactly Fey, but the physical representation of the world and the universe itself. <laughs> and her name was Charlie. She saw Lynn in a little basket, swallowed up in sleep, as you do. You saw him like that at her doorstep. And normally she does actually pass the children she sees to, like, real Fey, because she's not really Fey. Or better, the child's actual parents if the child was just lost, but. She didn't think the Fae knew how to take care of a human infant. And she knew for a fact this child wasn't really lost or here on accident. So, she took him in and raised him as her own. And for a while, <laughs> Lynn thought that all plushies and toys were alive because Charlie often took on the form of an almost five foot tall teddy bear. It took a bit of a talk between those two for Lynn to figure out that it was just Charlie that was like that but I mean Charlie could have made the toys come to life she just didn't want to deal with like a Toy Story situation. <laughs> As time went on and Lynn got older he began to look more and more like the Fae. Charlie wasn't really gonna suppress her own use of magic and the forest was full of magical things and thus mana. Because Lynn basically like grew up there he began to show it and absorb all that magic. He started to grow horns, a tail, and his human ears began to look like animal ears by the time he was just 13. At this time, he also had some knowledge of magic, and Charlie was slowly giving him more, like, magic capacity, the ability to hold more magic, and teach him how to use the magic he was absorbing and the magic that was around him. By the time he was 18, his legs had become digigrade legs, if that's how you pronounce it. Which is basically like, he had goat legs, essentially. He had hooves and all that. He had master shape-shifting, and had a fully grown pair of horns, a full tail, and a full pair of goat ears. And seemingly black eyes. In the universe that my characters take place in, fake creatures are nocturnal, usually. Most of them. Not only because that's just how they naturally are, but because that's the time when most humans are tucked in their beds, not awake, and not there to freak out <laughs> at their presence and all that. The only fake creatures that are not active during the day are like plant-like ones. They absorb the sun so they are more active in the day to get that sun in because they're having like energy. Lindell was homeschooled most of his life from Charlie and was able to be social with other fake creatures. There are two types of fae, alright? The dark fae and the light fae. The dark fae really included um, fae that needed human flesh or human products to survive like blood or guts bones something like that <laughs> or were typically the kind that you see are more prone to hurt humans take like werewolves vampires or sirens that lure you in with their voice and then proceed to dunk you like donkey kong <laughs> fae like that you know take those for example that's not all that's just off the top of my tongue and what i know you probably know light fae were the fae that didn't really need human flesh or products to live 
and were more um, similar to humans in regards to diet rather than the dark fae. The light fae didn't really try to harm humans without reason, usually, unless they like fucked with their house or something. <laughs> Fairies, gnomes, and some plant-based fae are good examples. I say some because some plant-based fae were um, carnivores. They could also eat meat, and they don't really have morals. <laughs> they're not. They're not. Um, they don't really. Most of them don't really have the intelligence that humans do when it comes to morals. So they just. Ah, oh, human equals meat. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Because Lindell socialized with both types of fae, a uh, dark fae only with supervision from Charlie, of course, he ended up inheriting both of their traits. Lindell can eat human meat and not be affected in the same way eating human meat affects a human. He, he just prefers not to, man. All that makeup, plastic surgery, those clothes. You, you don't want to eat all that, man. It don't taste too good. <laughs> but, and he knows his origins. Well, he knows that he wasn't always a fake creature he was a human so eating human makes him like a little unsettled you know since he mastered shape-shifting by now he could shape-shift into a normal human and this was also pretty easy for him to do since he still had human blood and traits charlie sent Lynn off to college for culinary arts once she was like okay you can be around the humans and they won't flip their shit Lynn wanted to be a chef and find more ways to make more tastier food and there he met ella now you see i'm not sure if you can tell but Lynn is gay. Gay as hell. <laughs> However, Ella is bi and found an interest in Lynn. And she tried to, you know, get with him, but Lynn was obviously uninterested. So Ella decided to stalk him for a year. Totally normal. Eliminate Lynn's pet hamster. Again, completely normal. And through stalking him, again, completely normal. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> she eventually found out he wasn't really human. And she was going to tell everyone. He knew that were humans, of course. But Lynn knew that she was stalking him the whole time and actually intended to let her find out he wasn't human. Nope, she just like give up on him or get scared and leave him alone. Once he realized she was planning on an attempt to ruin his life, they got in a fight, of course. Who wouldn't? Ella, despite not being human herself, she was really weak for someone of her species, which I'll get into when I drop her lore video or something. I love her lore. It's so angsty. And Lindell being, well, Lindell and the son of the universe, essentially. The odds were very much in his favor. He used magic and basically did what anyone would do to another person had they been stalking them for a year and terminated their pet hamster named Steamed Ham. If you guys know the reference to that is, then you're awesome. You're epic. Thank you for watching my video. Please subscribe. What Lynn didn't take into consideration was that the kind of species Ella was they were essentially a mana sponge, or a magic sponge. They are born from an excess amount of mana in an area, and could absorb more mana throughout their life to get stronger. If mana is exhausted, of course, then so is their lifespan. So Ella absorbed a lot of the magic Lynn used on her, despite still losing the fight, obviously. And she became the strongest of her species, and a legend, actually. She was very, like, unknown and unpopular to her species, but when she was suddenly the top, it was like she appeared out of nowhere, essentially. But basically, Lynn did scare her off. But because Ella lives near the forest where Lynn lives, they do um, run into each other and just shoot each other a glare. And because they go to the same college. After the Ella incident, Lynn was around 19 now and met his first crush, a uh, human crush, actually, Brady. But Brady was straight as a board. Straight man. And he actually had a girlfriend, too. Lynn thought it was about time to move out of the forest so you can also be at this crush and because he'd be closer to college and didn't have to travel too far to get there. And much to Charlie's dismay at seeing her baby boy grow up so fast, he moved in a shared house with Brady. They split rent and living expenses. One day, Brady tells Lynn he's planning to go to another country to visit his girlfriend and her family, and asks Lynn to come along. Lynn, of course, except not only because now Brady is his best friend, with some more than friend's feelings behind it, but also because he's never been outside of his country, let alone his city. They hop on a plane and everything seems fine and dandy until the plane crashes. Yeah, Lynn was the only survivor with a major scar, however. Because he's fey and knew magic, he of course knew healing magic and was able to heal himself. But once he came to, after obviously being knocked out of it from a plane crash, it was too late for everyone else, including Brady. His fey body was the only one that could handle the crash compared to everyone else on the plane who was human. Major survivor's guilt there, huh? Fuck, I don't know how I'd be able to handle that. <laughs> I say that as I'm... Um, 
giving this severe trauma to my fucking oh, my, my OC. He used magic to teleport to his home in the forest and well, clung to his mom. He just lost his best friend, so he dropped out of college, put the house up for sale after giving all of Brady's things to his girlfriend, and moved back in with his mom, Charlie. He wouldn't have been able to handle being in a house all alone, one that used to house Brady and his best friend. But Charlie's heart broke for her boy, and Lynn fell into a deep, deep depression. So, Charlie reached out to an old, and in fact ancient, <laughs> friend of hers to try to give Lynn something to do and distract him. The embodiment! Hey, hey, I talked about them in the last lore video, hey, hey, woo, woo. The embodiment took Lynn under their wing, and as a sort of therapist, teacher, and weird uncle or aunt, <laughs> this helped him a lot to get back out of his shell, and get back out there to make friends again. And during that time, he met his now adopted daughter, Bobo, which is her nickname. Her real name is Bonnie. Bobo was eight years old and was an orphan. When Lindell found her, she was lost, and so he gently took her back to his house. Charlie basically went, I found this sassy lost child. Where are her parents? And and Bobo went in the ground. <laughs> and everyone just went kind of went, oops, okay. We need some parents or a caretaker for this kid. And so Lindell took on that job. He took her under his wing, akin to how the embodiment did with him, but in a more parental manner. He eventually adopted her, and now anyone who breathes wrongly in her direction gets deleted. Nowadays, Lynn practices what he's taught from the embodiment as an apprentice of the Guardian of the Universe and takes care of his daughter, Bobo. He does teach her some magic here and there, shapeshifting into a human more importantly so she can get into school sooner than he did. And that's it. Pretty angsty but sweet at the end, no? I already have some plans for the next lore videos in the making of my two favorite children, <laughs> Hadeus Ben Gallison and JC Harris Lovell. They're both OCs I've had for quite a long time compared to the embodiment Bobo and Charlie, so of course the lore and such is a lot more polished and refined compared to my other 70 and growing OCs. I also have a bunch of animations in progress, more specifically the Absolute Territory meme, Out of Touch meme, and soon the Rain Girl and Meat Grinder meme. Also, at the time of scripting this and recording this, actually, my commissions are open with payment via PayPal. I'm putting my prices and our examples on the screen now. It'd be really great to get some commissions coming in, as I need to start saving up some money right now, because I want to get some experience in for when commissions do start to become something bigger and more serious in the future. Places you can contact me are in my card, like Instagram, Plus, the commission prizes and examples are on my Instagram and Tumblr if you want to look again. Thank you for listening to me info dump about my silly little OCs and characters. And I hope to see you again with another lore video in a month or so. Goodbye! <laughs>